Distinguished uh, co-speakers and guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the invitation to this summit. Uh, let me touch briefly uh, and mainly on the monetary policy part of uh, the panel's discussion. Now, euro area inflation rose to 10% in September 2022, and that's an increase from 9.1% in August. Now, uh, the ECB's primary objective, where my uh, Governing Council colleague Gabriel uh, and I meet regularly, is price stability, which is defined as keeping inflation at 2% over the medium term. So what has happened? Because a lot has been said about the inflation and the reaction of the ECB. Now, firstly, inflation started rising in 2021. Let us remember that in 2020, we even had negative inflation. And it started rising in 2021 because economies were reopening from COVID and there was a mismatch between demand and supply. And that was exacerbated by supply chain bottlenecks. So it was a supply side shock. And then the war happened, which was an extreme inflation supply side shock because that catapulted completely the energy prices. But at the ECB, we started normal, normalizing monetary policy since December 2021, because we need to be aware that interest rates are not the only monetary policy tool that has been in place. We had a number of policy tools to support the accommodative stance to support the Eurozone economies during COVID. So firstly, since December, we decided to reduce the net purchases of uh, bonds, both under PEP and APP. We stopped completely the, PEP net, uh, the net purchases under PEP in March 2022. By the beginning of July, we stopped the APP net purchases, and then we created the transmission protection instrument in order to enable the interest rate hikes without causing market turmoil. And then we proceeded with a 50 basis points interest rate hike in July, followed by 75 basis points interest rate in September. And as, as per the announcements of the Governing Council, there will be several other interest rate rises as part of the normalization of monetary policy. However, monetary policy has to be considered within the following context in order to understand the effectiveness of monetary policy as well as how inflation works. Monetary policy is based on the medium term outlook of inflation and its effect is medium term. Any monetary policy decisions roughly take 18 months to filter through and affect the real economy, to filter through to banks, households and firms and impact credit consumption and investment decisions. So monetary policy cannot and does not target current inflation. It's about the medium term. And on that basis, the most recent ECB staff projections for inflation for the Eurozone um, is that inflation will average at 8.1% for 2022, 5.5% for 2023, and 2.3% 2 for 2024. So as things stand, inflation is expected to come close to target in the medium term. I do emphasize as things stand. Now, most of the inflation is in, is in energy, as we all know, which remains extremely elevated and is 38% of total inflation. Food is also another important element of inflation at 11% in terms of price increases. In other words, it still continues to be cost push inflation, whereas monetary policy mainly affects aggregate demand and not the supply side and the cost push elements of it. So monetary policy has a more difficult job than usual because instead of dealing with the typical demand pull inflation, it has to deal uh, with the cost push inflation and therefore needs a more balanced approach because if you underestimate it, you don't tackle inflation. If you overreact, you may cause, you will likely cause 
a negative impact on economic output as well as unemployment. So it's not an easy task. And this is because the effort of monetary policy is to realign aggregate demand to aggregate supply. We had a shock on aggregate supply and aggregate demand now is mismatched causing the inflation effect. In addition to all this, countries that are more dependent on gas import and gas prices will have their output impacted by energy prices on their own. And therefore, that brings another element, especially given that we're entering what is predicted to be a tough winter with very high energy prices. And this leads me to the next point as regards monetary policy, which is the uncertainty of it. And what are the uncertainties that we need to be aware of and monitor? One is the risk of wage and price increase spiral. As inflation persists, demands, demands for wage increases will appear. If firms give in to those wage increases, they will have to protect their profit margins, which means they will ra raise their prices, and then you get into a wage price inflation spiral, which is very damaging for the economy. So far, we haven't witnessed that in Europe. Then it's inflation expectations. Will they get the anchored? If inflation expectations get the anchored, that is also a very difficult problem to tackle from a monetary policy perspective because inflation becomes entrenched and it takes more extreme measures to bring that down. Again, even though certain measures give inflation expectations slightly above 2% in the medium term, I think currently it's at the 2.3 I mentioned before, it's still not proven that it's been de-anchored, but there, there is a high risk, and this needs to be monitored. And a final risk is the geopolitical developments themselves. The huge shock from the war was what drove inflation completely uh, out of control. And supply-side shocks become effective immediately. Those increases in prices, in energy prices, became effective immediately. Who knows what will be the situation on the ground with the war going forward? Will there be further disruptions on energy prices? Then we will have more inflationary shocks. Will there be a resolution of the problem? Then maybe energy prices will come down as quickly as they rose. And then we need to adjust for that. So there are a lot of uncertainties that monetary policy needs to deal with. Monitoring and pacing the reaction of monetary policy is very important. I'll leave it at that. Thank you.